Hey gang, it's me again. Today I'm gonna do ca reacting to Castlevania Part Two. So let's get started. Oh, Game Boy, I, re I remember those graphics. That stars a female Belmont, Sonya Belmont. It's not a bad game. It plays just like the other Castlevania Game Boy games. But one thing I hated was all the different paths that you can accidentally take that end up in what's basically dead ends. You know, sometimes there's a pork chop or whatever at the end, which gives you health. But then you gotta walk all the way back, risking getting hit and losing all the health you just picked up. But anyways, going back to the storyline, I usually just ignore when long-running games franchise and start throwing out pieces of the story and call it not canon. In my head, I usually just try to find a way to make that story fit in the timeline, even if it's no longer official, as long as it doesn't really conflict drastically with any other story in that universe. But Legends was taken out for a couple of good reasons. First of all, the story takes place in 1450, which already messes up the time frame when Dracula actually started attacking humanity. That's been established as happening in the 1470s, so this is way too early. Around the 1450s, Dracula wasn't really bothering anyone. He was just kind of keeping to himself. And even the Netflix series confirms this now. Simon's 
And yes, I do highly recommend these games. Although all three of these games tell the same story, Konami did a great job making them each feel like totally different experiences. Then we have Castlevania Rondo of Blood, which I showed in the timeline series. Rondo of Blood was released exclusively in Japan for the PC Engine, known in the US as the Turbo Graphics 16. Right now it's available on the Wii Virtual Console, and it's also unlockable with the PSP Castlevania Dracula X. But going back to the 90s when it first came out, if you wanted to play it, you would have to settle for the Super Nintendo version. And that's what Dracula X is, which by the way in Europe it was called Vampire's Kiss. This game is basically Rondo of Blood, but a little bit of a watered down version in comparison. Now I do want to explain something because for some reason I get a lot of flack. I call Dracula X a remake or port of Rondo of Blood. There's this argument that it's a totally separate game, and I get that. It does feel very different and has a lot of original aspects that aren't in Rondo of Blood. It does stand as its own game. But what I mean by remake or port is that it's a version of Rondo of Blood's story. It's not a completely separate encounter that Richter had with Dracula. Gameplay-wise, yes, you are playing a different game. And why did I include Rondo of Blood in the timeline series in comparison to Dracula X? I may have taken some liberties with the story, where there's been some gaps or things that don't make sense, but I wanted to stick as close to Castlevania canon where I could. And the final battle of the game basically confirms that Rondo of Blood is the way the story went down. Everyone agrees that Symphony of the Night is 1,000% canon in the Castlevania universe. There's no doubt about it. Here's the final battle between Richter and Dracula, as depicted in the flashback at the beginning of Symphony of the Night. And here's the final battle, as depicted in Rondo of Blood. The two are clearly showing in the same battle, right? Well, here's the final battle in Dracula X. So, clearly, Dracula X isn't the official version of Richter's story. Dracula X also has a different art style altogether. It, it redesigned the levels, and some of the gameplay is a bit different. For example, you can still save Maria, but you can't play as her like you could in the original game. Dracula also took a couple of girls hostage in the original, but in Dracula X, some of them are completely missing from the game compared to Rondo of Blood. And over on the PSP, we also have Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles, which is the PSP remake of Rondo of Blood. This one is a proper remake with an awesome 2.5D graphical overhaul. It's fully voice acted, a redone, more detailed script, and it lets you play as Maria just like the original one did. Dracula X Chronicles is the most up-to-date way to have the Rondo of Blood experience, although the original PC Engine version is still my favorite. The gameplay itself is extremely similar, and it feels very polished, and the final battle with Dracula ignored the Dracula X version, taking inspiration from the Rondo of Blood boss fight. And if you're going through collecting all the games or trying to play through all of them, you may also run into one called the Castlevania Adventure Rebirth. It's exclusively a downloadable Wii game, and it's a reimagining of the Castlevania Adventure for Game Boy, starring Christopher Belmont. It's a complete overhaul of the game, and it's an absolute must play for any Castlevania fan. The music is already done beautifully, the controls are improved, the bosses and the levels are changed, and graphically, it looks like a really high quality Super Nintendo game. I think this one really flew under the radar. I never hear anyone talking about it, even among Castlevania fans. Probably because it was exclusively on the Wii and specifically a downloadable title, so I'm not too surprised there. And instead of Dracula turning into a giant bat like in the original, he turns into this huge horn face too. So the final battle is quite different. <laughs> Nostalgia aside, it was a much better game than the original. And Castlevania Judgment was another Wii exclusive Castlevania title and a side story that matches several characters from Castlevania Universe together. It's also the first and only Castlevania fighting game, but it's not a traditional fighting game like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. I'm not even sure what to compare it to, to be honest. The fighting mechanics are pretty simple, and characters run around in a fully 3D arena. 
and they each have a special ultimate attack they can do. And I actually really enjoyed this game, fighting as all the different characters in the Castlevania universe and seeing all their super moves. The reason I didn't include it in the timeline series, aside from the fact that Konami says it's not canon, is because of the story. Curse of Darkness had this character I didn't really cover called Saint Germain, who almost seems like a representation of time itself. So he travels around witnessing different events. In Judgment, there's a similar character called Aeon that's plucking all these characters from the Castlevania timeline at different points in their life. Interesting story, but if I had included this in the timeline, I would have had to stop the flow of And the yes, go play it. It's a bad fucking ass. To explain a character going into a time rip and going through the events of Judgment. It would have been messy, uninteresting, and very distracting to the storytelling. And when this came out, Castlevania was going through this weird transition in its art style. When Castlevania first started, it was very Conan barbarian like, and eventually it kind of morphed into a more like a vampire gothic art style that looks super awesome. And at this point in time, it was going into this very generic anime style. Now, I'll admit, I might be biased because I'm not a big fan of anime at all, outside of Dragon Ball and maybe two or three others. So I have no idea what these designs were inspired. By. I think it was Death Note or something like that. If you know, leave me a comment down below. Honestly, I never really cared enough to look into it. Let's look at the characters from the other games and see how they look here. Alucard doesn't look too different, just wearing some different armor that we've seen him wear. He looks fine. Armilla looks like some kind of half naked vampire stripper. She kind of reminds me of Boldo from Soul Calibur with all those straps. Death looks completely different in every game that he's in after he transforms, so he looks different here mm. again. Cornell looks like a badass in this game. This is one redesign for a character that I am totally down for. In the N64, he's basically just this wolf with pants on. In Judgment, he's fully armored up. Dracula looks like Dracula. No, I love that design. Some steampunk inspired armor with some kind of side nipple whole thing that it reminds me of uh if you're a dragon ball fan it looks like janemba's fat form eric Lippard from castlevania bloodlines on the second genesis is shown you wouldn't be able to tell by just looking at him because in this he looks like a much younger form holding the olive part spear and he absolutely looks like a girl there's a golem which has appeared as an enemy throughout the Castlevania series. Sometimes it's a boss, sometimes it's a regular enemy. Grant is here from Castlevania 3 in his monster form, looking like some kind of mummy with blades, reminding me even more of Boldo from Soul Calibur. Even the way he moves around sometimes is quite similar. Maria is the strangest character in here, though. She's a teenager here, so I guess it's sometime between Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night. I have no clue why, but they made her obsessed with giant breasts. I think it's hilarious, but it makes no sense. If you're here, you must be one as well. Uh, they're huge. <laughs> Will you stop? These things are really get in the way. <laughs> Anyways, Shinoa is in there with a shorter haircut and different clothes. She just she just looks like Bayonetta. Saifa is in here also, looking like a typical anime priestess of some kind. Trevor looks like he's a little bit older than he was in any previous game. And what I find interesting is that he's wearing an eye patch. He's usually represented as having a scar on his eye, but this is the first time we've seen him missing that eye completely. And they took Simon's look from Castlevania Chronicles and turned him into some kind of weird Japanese goth metal star with perfectly gelled hair, leather straps, tattoos. I mean, it doesn't look awful from a character design point of view. I just, I never pictured Simon this way at all. It just doesn't scream Simon Belmont to me. But like I said, I have mixed feelings on the art design in this game. Check it out. And the last game I'm going to show you today is Harmony of Despair. It's available on the PlayStation Network on PS3 and Xbox Live Arcade on the 360. I was freaking addicted to this game for the longest time. It virtually has no story. And it was a mishmash of a bunch of Castlevania games. You can pick a bunch of different characters and they don't really level up, but you're constantly... They need to make a reboot of this. Stats, and it just 
Konami, resurrect this character, resurrect this character or eat my vampiric dick. There's not really a lot to say about this one other than it's easy to get hooked on this game. Combining all the different attacks with different characters to see what they do, selecting the background music of the choice that plays, which, by the way, is made up of awesome remixes of classic Castlevania tunes. <laughs> This is what Castlevania needs to be. And if you have friends that like Castlevania, you can jump online and have a six player game going, which is crazy. And it's insanely hard by yourself, so you'll definitely need some friends to get through it without ripping your hair out. But I hope that this Castlevania timeline series has gotten some of you interested in going out and playing through these games. Part of my goal with doing this series, aside from being an enormous Castlevania fan, was to introduce younger generations to this world. I just recently turned 31 years old, so I grew up playing these games from the very beginning. But there's a ton of younger gamers out there who grew up with games like Halo and Call of Duty, which isn't a bad thing. I'm also a fan of those games. But they did miss out on the early days of gaming completely. So if you're a younger viewer out there that missed out on these, go out and pick them up if you've got the console to play them on. Download them on the Wii Virtual Console. It doesn't matter. Just play them. You will not regret it. If you're a veteran gamer like me and love the hell out of these games, I hope you just had fun sitting back and listening to the story of Classic Castlevania. And now, I'll share with you my upcoming surprise video, which I had no plans on making, but due to popular demand, it's coming. Join me next time for the Castlevania Timeline Part 5, The Lords of Shadow, where we'll explore the reimagined vision of the Castlevania story, starring a brand new hero and a completely different Castlevania universe. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and do follow me on Amino and TikTok, and I'll see you all next video.